when I was born, the doctors told my mom, your daughter has no amniotic fluid around her at all. So when I was born, it was a miracle that I came out screaming. The doctors told my parents, we just want to warn you, expect your daughter to never be able to talk, walk, crawl, think, or do anything by herself. I had to deal with bullying a lot, but as I said, I was raised very normally. So when I started kindergarten, I had absolutely no idea that I looked different. No clue. I couldn't see that I looked different from other kids. I think of it kind of as a big slap of reality for a five-year-old because I went into school first day decked out in Pocahontas gear. I was ready. I went in with my backpack that looked like a turtle shell because it was bigger than me. And I walked up to a little girl, I smiled at her. She looked up at me like I was a monster, like I was the scariest thing she'd ever seen in her life. I thought the day was going to get better, and unfortunately it didn't. The day kind of got worse and worse, and a lot of people just wanted to have absolutely nothing to do with me, and I couldn't understand why. Why? What did I do? I didn't do anything to them. In my mind, I was still a really cool kid. So I had to go home and ask my parents, what's wrong with me? What did I do? Why don't they like me? And they sat me down and they said, Lizzie, the only thing that's different about you is that you're smaller than the other kids. You have this syndrome, but it's not going to define who you are. For so long, I thought what defined me was my outer appearance. I thought that my little tiny legs and my little arms and my little face was ugly. I thought it was disgusting. I hated when I would wake up in the morning and I was going to middle school and looking in the mirror getting ready and thinking, can I just scrub this syndrome off? It would make my life so much easier if I could just scrub it off. I would wish and pray and hope and do whatever I could to pray that I would wake up in the morning and I would be different and I wouldn't have to deal with these struggles. It's what I wanted every single day and every single day I was disappointed. My life was put into my hands just like your lives were put into yours. You are the person in the front seat of your car. You are the one who decides whether your car goes down a bad path or a good path. You are the one that decides what defines you. And let me tell you, it could be really easy to, I mean, really hard to figure out what, what defines you. Because there are times where I would just get so annoyed and frustrated, and I don't care what defines me. When I was in high school, I found a video, unfortunately, that somebody posted of me labeling me the world's ugliest woman. There were four million views to this video, eight seconds long, no sound, thousands of comments, people saying, Lizzie, please, please just do a world a favor, put a gun to your head and kill yourself. Think, think about that. If people did, if people told you that, strangers told you this. I cried my eyes out, of course, and I was ready to kind of fight back, and something kind of clicked in my head, and I thought, I'm just going to leave it alone. Then I started realizing, am I going to let the people who call me a monster define me? Am I going to let the people who said, kill it with fire, define me? No. I'm going to let my goals and my success and my accomplishments be the things that define me, not my outer appearance. Not the fact that I'm visually impaired. Not the fact that I have this syndrome that nobody knows what it is. So I told myself I'm gonna work my butt off and do whatever I could to make myself better because in my mind, the best way that I could get back at all those people who make fun of me, who teased me, who called me ugly, who called me a monster, was to make myself better and to show them, you know what? Tell me those negative things, I'm going to turn them around and I'm going to use them as a ladder to climb up to my goals. That's what I did. I told myself I wanted to be a motivational speaker, I want to write a book, graduate college, have my own family, my own career. Eight years later, I'm standing in front of you still doing motivational speaking. First thing, I accomplished it. I wanted to write a book in a couple weeks. I will be submitting the manuscript for my third book. I wanted to graduate college and I just finished college. I'm getting a degree. 
I'm getting a degree in communication studies from Texas State University in San Marcos, and I have a minor in English. I really, really tried to use real life experience uh, while I was getting my degree, and my professors were not having it. But I wanted to have, lastly, my own family and my own career, and the family part is kind of down the line. My career part, I feel like I'm really doing well with it, considering the fact that when I decided I wanted to be a motivational speaker, I went home, I sat in front of my laptop, went to Google, typed in how to be a motivational speaker. I'm not even joking. I worked my butt off. I used the people who were telling me that I couldn't do this to motivate me. I used their negativity to light my fire to keep going. Use that. Use that. Use that negativity that you have in your life to make yourself better because I guarantee you, guarantee you, you will win. Now, I want to end with asking you again. I want you to leave here and ask yourself what defines you. But remember, grade starts here.